Good afternoon there. Hey, this is a second in a series of um, uh, videos I'm doing on setting up landed costs. Uh, the first one was actually doing some basic setup of charge names, reference types, routes. This one we're going to jump into a little bit of, you know, when I get the as when I get the landed costs on the trade operation, how does that affect cost accounting and how do I get those amounts to show up as part of my product costs and a specific standard cost today and how that affects uh, standard costs and then by extension of the purchase price variance. So several setup sets to go through, as always down in the um, uh, comments will be a PowerPoint walk through of all this and we're going to be actually referencing here a little bit of the first video so again we're going to go into setup and maintenance uh, through our user that can do that uh, the first thing we're going to do is create expense pools expense pools and cost accounting are set up so that it's a way to aggregate expenses and compare base pools um, currently there's no real functionality behind it um, it's more um, a reference field right now but they do have plans to use that in the future. So we'll we'll touch on that. Manage expense. Overhead expense pools. There we go. So these are set up in the system, something you might go through during your um, uh, implementation. Uh, let's see, we can um, start with US. And so different expense pools, they can be different manufacturing expense pools or any kind of overhead that you want to group general letter account numbers in the end so that you can compare the earned, which comes from cost accounting with the accolades in the general ledger. So setting up here is very simple. You push a plus, you put in your code name description. I won't set it up here. Is it an asset or expense? Because remember that costing can be done um, as an asset, meaning inventory or expense, meaning I'm buying supplies, but I still want to track perpetuals. And then what's my common set name, which I usually use common set here. So that's the first step, which is expense pool. And then we have to set up um, charge names. Charge names are used in landed cost to um, as buckets to accumulate different charges to. So in the previous, uh, in the first video, I showed how we can set up a couple of these, like we've set up storage and we've set up brokerage. Anything that starts with ORA comes, um, uh, this is seeded um, as part of the system from our development group. Um, so those are owned by the system, but you can set up as many others as you choose. Uh, you can put in a, a name, a description, you know, you can even get into default allocation basis. Um, but those can be overridden at the trade operation level. So again, setting up a charge name so we can accumulate charges. And then reference types. Uh, we're going to get rid of manage and put reference types because I believe it's manage landed cost reference types. Here again, this is a way to segregate document sets, et cetera. This is an optional step. You don't have to do this, but I like to set them up so I can use them if I need them. Um, and then now well, let's get into the costing part, which is cost elements. Cost elements will usually be set up through your implementation. These are gonna be things like uh, labor material overhead, um, if you're going to run um, IMTs, internal material transfers with transfer pricing, you're going to want to set up profit and inventory. But what we're looking for here is the basic on material because, you know, we're bringing in a product that we're going to need costs on. So we can set it up in material. We can also set up its own cost element. Um, if you choose, again, this is something you'll have to discuss during your implementation to figure out which is the best way to set it up for your organization. So these are the overall cost buckets, um, like anything that will roll up eventually into labor material and overhead. Or I should say in Oracle speak, resource material and overhead. And then there's the component mapping. And this is where the rubber hits the road from a landed cost perspective. 
So in here, under cost component codes, I can set up um, cost components that will map to the landed costs, as you see down here at the bottom. So we're going to add one in here. Um, and it's I'm going to do a plus sign to add it. And I'm going to do another landed cost. We're just going to do the common set. And it's going to be brokerage. This is what we set up a few minutes ago. And brokerage. Um, And so the, the I'm sorry, it's not broken, this material, because it has to be a cost amount that was set up before. So brokerage is going to roll up to material. So I now have two landed costs um, components here, one for storage fees, one for brokerage fees, and they're going to roll up into material. So this is what's, this is the most important thing. All the rest is set up that you have to do for costing in general, but this is how we get landed costs to come over um, into uh, cost accounting to be able to do things like purchase price variance. So we're gonna go ahead and save and close this. And once this setup is done, the next step really is to go through and create your standard cost. So we're going to um, pop over to our cost accounting manager. I've set up a cost scenario already. So we'll go into cost accounting. We're going to go into manage cost scenarios. And we'll bring up the one here, my test scenario. I'm going to go ahead and open it up. And I'm only rolling one item. Uh, that way it, it runs uh, quicker. I have to set up my, it's called manage standard costs is where you set up material costs. Um, you can see I have a few in here, so we're going to create one for CN47513. And my valuation unit is 001, 002, um, 002, which is Atlanta in this case. And this is where I'm going to put my standard cost. I'm going to put material is my first one. And it's going to be, let's say, $14. The next one can be um, storage fees. So this is one of the ones from landed costs, and I think uh, it's going to cost us, you know, standards a dollar fifty for per unit on storage. I can even do one for brokerage, because that's another one that we've set up. Hopefully. No, something's not set up, right? So we'll leave that off. I love it when things work out. So we'll go into here. You can see here that we've set up um, material and storage, storage being my landed cost item. And then at this point, you would go ahead and roll it up. Once it's completed successfully, you can come in and view rolled up cost. And it will have added in the cost of um, all the different components of material. Material, here's my storage, which comes from my landed cost. So, again, the most important thing here is to get our cost component mappings and our cost elements set up so that then when I come into cost accounting and set up my standards, I can have standard lines. And so when invoices come in or posted and then all the processes are run, it will create purchase price variance off of um, what we said the standard storage fee was in this case and what it actually came in as. So that way we start to see PPV. Um, by item for those items as part of our landed cost. 
Um, hope this was helpful. Um, look forward to um, more videos on how to set up uh, land and, and use landed costs.